Adoramiwooiblogs.com. It's my like, it's like how I start my interviews. Do you approve? Of course. <laughs> Always. <laughs> because you're like a veteran, you know, you, you, you know Melody Festival and Inside Out. You know Eurovision Inside Out. I mean, you were in Eurovision in 1992. Mm -hmm. Do those memories still sort of like come to mind? They haunt. They haunt you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I embrace every moment of that memory. You know, it was a fantastic gift for me. I had always dreamed of it since I was a kid that one day I will enter the Swedish selection show. And in '92, I got the possibility. I had the song. And I won. And I, I got to represent Sweden. Amazing. Uh, in one try. Uh, Sanna Nilsson last year took her seven. seven times to do it. And can you imagine I did it in one? Fantastic. No, it's a great memory. And also very, very good for me because I actually know the upside of it. And I know the downside of it because of my results. I was second to last. And you were in last, though. No, second to last. Yeah, but not last. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, of course. Oh, well. In a way, it's better to be last. In a way. Why? You could use it. You know, you could use it like Jan Tegen did. He, he built his whole career on being last in the Eurovision. Could be turned to something positive. Anyway, I use the experience of this with the artists in Melody Festival. And, I mean, I know exactly what, why they want things. I know why they react in a specific way. I know also when they're sad, why, why they're sad and how they feel. I, I, I can relate to them in a totally different way than a, uh, than a just TV person can do. And of course, you're very famous for picking unusual wild cards as well. Yes. I mean, like this year when you picked Hassa, it's a wild card. I mean, nobody saw that coming. No. I, I had a gut feeling for that song and, and him. I mean, he's well known. He's been well known for like 30 years in Sweden, so he's very popular. But I, I didn't see one thing coming that he became the kid's favorite. I knew all the, uh, I knew my mother would be happy and I knew that a lot of people in my age would be happy as well because it's a very sing-alongy happy song. Do you think but it would have done well at Eurovision though? No, I don't, I doubt that. It, it's, it's very Swedish. And you would have had a, but had it won, would you have then gone back to the drawing board, written English lyrics? Did you, did you have a long-term game plan for no. it? I actually, I, we talked about it and we said this is one of the songs that should be in its original language because it's a very typical Swedish song. And then it can work, you never know. I, I mean, it could be like one of these things, you know, that just, just, you know, just slide through because it's odd. Uh, but, but I love that the kids embraced him. Everybody called him Grandpa Hasse, and it became the biggest song in the schools, I, and you know, in the kindergartens. They sing this; it's amazing. One thing I love about you is um, is your opinions. <laughs> Yeah. Because I also have quite strong opinions. You're on Info Eurovision, I'm on the Wee Wee Jury. Well, well, it's not quite the same because SVT do your show, but what is that like, having really strong opinions on a nationally broadcasted show? Scary. No! <laughs> uh, but you have to. You know, if, if you do a show like that and you realize that, okay, for example, there's a panel, we have a panel of five, and if everybody sort of stays in the middle on one song, and it's a song that I don't really like, then you go to the edge. Mm. And just to, 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 I mean, you do TV, I'm a producer as well. You've worked in production, you've worked in, um, as a composer, you've worked as a singer, you've worked as a performer, you kind of, you are Eurovision royalty. I just wondered, like, have you not thought about perhaps an EBU role even? Oh, no. You see, that's boring. Really? Yes, because, to be honest, once you get to the Eurovision, all the work is done. What, what really gets me going is the creation. And that's why it's so fantastic every year in, in the Swedish selection show because I'm in every process 
I'm there to lead the work of the jury. And then I select songs together with my colleagues. Then I select artists for these songs. Then I'm the head of the creative group that creates the acts. And I am in charge of the, um, the content group that works with the hosts and do the interval acts and the opening act. So I am hands-on in every process of Melody Festival. Why Malmo? Why Malmo? When you have Friends Arena, why did we go to Malmo two years ago? First of all, Friends Arena wasn't finished. It was a building site. But it, that's it, where you had Melody Festival in of that year before. No. 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 Two, year, two years ago, Melody Festival was in Friends. It wasn't open. It wasn't open. When we came back from Baku, it wasn't open. I was there for Melody Festival. 13, yes. Yeah. Yes, but it wasn't open when we took the decision. Oh, right. The summer of 12, when we had to take the decision, right. no one could even give us an estimate for what they would cost to put lights in that arena. Right. Because nobody had been there. So nobody would give us anything, not even an estimate. They were like, we don't know. And we knew it was huge. And we knew also that it's very, very difficult to fill the semi-finals and to have a echoing, empty Friends Arena with 5,000 fans, it would have been a disaster. No, that was, that was absolutely the correct decision. There was no way anybody could estimate the cost. We couldn't even give, tell SVT an approximate budget in June because the arena wasn't built. And the surroundings, I tell you, we were there, yes, we were there in March 2013 with Melody Festival. And you remember it. It was a building site outside. It, I just remember loving Melody Festival in, in 2013. And then Malmo was an anticlimax. I mean, I love the show, Eurovision, of course, but as a, as a host city, I, I kind of would have liked Stockholm. <laughs> Yeah, but but Friends Arena is not Stockholm. Bear in mind, it's Seoul now. It's another community, another budget, and other people ruling. It's not as easy as it looks. Krista, you're amazing. And what even makes you more amazing is you understand beautiful hair. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes. You didn't see that coming, did you? I didn't. You? No, I didn't. Well, Christo used to run a salon, right, back in yes. Sweden called Beautiful Hair, which was very successful, had all the celebrities coming in, having their hair done, but now he's no longer doing hair. No, I'm not. However, I have a really funny story. Okay, go on, do share. It, it goes back only two weeks when we were here uh, filming. Sardon Feiner and I was here. Uh, okay. Uh, because we hosted the pre-show of the 60th anniversary in Sweden. Greatest hits, yeah. Okay. And we were sitting, we didn't have our own dressing room, but we, we nicked EBU's office, actually, at the arena. And we, they, they were very, 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 ha uh, uh, how do you say? Uh, uh, Annoyed, excited. No, they were very uh, friendly and said, you can use our room. So we did. And I was sitting next to her and we were doing the script and we were talking and she's fiddling with her hair, putting on some bun of hair like this. And and I see this happening, but I'm, I, I don't even think as a hairdresser anymore. So I'm, I'm just talking along and we're talking about the script and finally she's so annoyed and she's like, oh, for say, could... Isn't there anyone in this building who can help me with the hair? And I look and say, well, I can. Well, I guess I'm, I can. And she's like, oh, you're a f hairdresser. <laughs> Get over here and help me. And she was very, very annoyed. Why didn't you say anything? I said, I don't think that way. I, don't, I didn't even think of it. It was like, yeah, I saw you, you know, struggling, and I was like, yeah, whatever. So you are literally a triple threat. You know, he does hair, he does music, he does production. We oui, we oui, readers, it's been fun, I tell you, interviewing Chris Terby Orkman. <laughs> Thank you.